the 133rd Airlift Wing in 2006. The people, the planes, the places. 2006 began on a high note for the Minnesota Air National Guard's premier airlift wing. Following a successful wing operational readiness inspection, many airmen received awards for an excellent job. Wing Commander Colonel Tim Casalter praised everyone for their hard work and dedication. And let's celebrate our success, let's recognize that success, and let's make sure all those people that go before us and after us realize how good we are at this moment in time. The wing proved ready for a challenging year, and our people and C-130H3 aircraft rose to the call. A renewed emphasis on physical fitness for the 1,300 men and women of the 133rd meant consistent workouts and testing. And for the aircraft, one healthy indicator was the return of Gopher 5, back from structural repairs following a 2004 mishap. Maintenance crews got right to it, even as they prepared for deployment. Members from all squadrons and flights maintained a steady involvement in the global war on terrorism. Throughout the year, individuals and groups took their turns in the sandbox of Southwest Asia and many other parts of the world. Two major deployments included several aircraft with crews, maintenance and support to Operation Joint Forge. Based out of Germany, the 133rd served twice in 2006 to make the important runs throughout Europe and into Africa. We airlift passengers into theater, you know, troops into theater. Um, we do humanitarian, especially during Shining Gulf, there's a lot of humanitarian um, aid going on. Um, we do air medical missions. Especially on my first deployment, I was a little nervous. Uh, you just want to, you want to know, you want the reassurance that your stuff's working. Back at the base on the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport, our people captured the attention of television and Hollywood film crews. Our involvement in recovery efforts from the hurricanes last year brought an adopted dog to the wing and then back to its family in Louisiana and a heartwarming story. And the members of the air crew who witnessed the attack on America in Washington, D.C. and Pennsylvania were interviewed and included in a DVD telling the story of September 11, 2001. Late winter brought our annual hockey tournament. This year saw games with Army Guard and 148th Fighter Wing teams. In other sports news, members of the 133rd supported the Minnesota Twins on their opening day with the giant flag on the field and an honor guard. A frequent phenomenon here in Minnesota is the spring flood fight. This year saw lesser damage than in years past and not as much involvement by members of the wing. 2006 saw many joint events with the Minnesota Army National Guard, including a 150th anniversary celebration in the North Hangar. With guest speaker, Vice President Dick Cheney, the Minnesota Guard drew more positive exposure. The 133rd Airlift Wing, based here in Minneapolis, St. Paul, has carried out numerous C-130 missions in support of our operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. You are projecting peace proudly, and the nation is grateful. After that, Fox Sports Network North highlighted the 133rd with a live broadcast, also from the North Hangar. This featured interviews before and during a Twins game with members of the wing and included live feeds to and from Iraq where more wing members were put in the spotlight. Other early summer activities included an opportunity to dress up for a military ball held in downtown Minneapolis or to dress casually for a St. Saint Paul Saints baseball game with family, friends and co-workers. But the summer wasn't just fun in the sun. Annual aircrew survival training helps sharpen skills we need for combat missions looming on the horizon. We are willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done, jumping right in. Even when it gets deep, we have learned to keep our heads up. Crews trained in new ways to put cargo on target and updated other flying procedures. Others spent weeks or months around the world supporting the national defense mission wherever they were needed. A large group from security forces departed to the desert where they will serve into next year. A new mission came to the National Guard, assisting the Border Patrol in America's southwestern region. The President and Governor asked us to volunteer for Operation Jumpstart, and once again we stepped forward. This mission is expected to continue for a while. Speaking of the Commander-in-Chief, President George W. Bush parked Air Force One on our ramp in August. This gave us the opportunity to directly support the White House. We like to think the 133rd hosted the President's jet because of the good experience earlier with the Vice President, but it was also because of work being done on the other side of the airport. And due to construction on their facilities in Duluth, we hosted F-16 fighter jets from the 148th. 
For some, it was a reminder of the days after September 11, 2001, when they stood on alert here. On September 11, 2006, many 133rd members participated in another ceremony and tributes during a Twins game. In the National Guard, we find opportunities to pass on successes with allies around the world. One ongoing program has us exchanging visits with transport air crews from Croatia. We share skills and ideas, but perhaps most importantly, we share in an exchange of friendship and building partnerships for peace. In October, we shared a lot of candy and some scares with youngsters parading around the base. Events like this and other holiday parties are organized by the Guard Family Network to help keep families involved here at the Air National Guard. Then another community event brought us back into the Metrodome, this time on Veterans Day weekend for our military tribute during the Vikings and Packers game. Despite an outcome favorable only to the Green Bay faithful, the fans all cheered for those of us in the military. As 2006 drew near a close, the 133rd Airlift Wing experienced another milestone in our history. Colonel Tim Casalter passed the flag of command to Colonel Greg Hasse on November 19. Now Brigadier General Casalter leads the Minnesota Air National Guard from a position at Joint Force Headquarters. Colonel Hasse becomes the 12th Wing Commander. Through the last few days, uh, many of you personally offered me the support as a Wing Commander. Uh, I not only sensed the support in your voices, I also sense some very special qualities. From that, we are strong, we are proud, we are willing to change, we are confident, we are respectful, and we are ready to make the sacrifices required to keep this state and country safe. We are the men and women of the 133rd Airlift Wing. After the celebration, there wasn't much time to rest. More training had to be squeezed in, and maintenance crews continued to prepare the aircraft for anticipated duty. The military doesn't announce specific deployment dates and locations much ahead of time, but we know more big missions are coming soon. Close to 200 members from the St. Paul base, 133rd Airlift Wing will also be deployed. Rotation will last approximately 120 days. They'll be deployed over the next three months beginning in January. Our C-130s are the finest tactical airlifters in the world. Our members are the most highly trained and experienced people in the business. 2006 proved to be a year of recovery and preparation. More building is going on, not just with concrete and steel, but with support to ideas like freedom and responsibility. No matter what the future holds, the 133rd Airlift Wing stands ready to support our state and our country.